I mean, you guys are really, really awesome because the room is full packed. So, and it's the last session. So you are really here to learn and I'm really happy about that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's start with the session. Uh, today we'll be talking about chaos engineering, chaos mesh. That's what you're here for. And I'll try my best to explain you uh, what chaos engineering is. By the way, uh, can you raise your hands? How many of you know about chaos engineering, like what it is and how it is being used? Awesome, almost everyone. So, um, so I, my name is Sayam Pathak, and I'm working as director of technical evangelism at CIVO. Uh, I'm also a CNCF ambassador, and yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the rate Sayam Pathak and tweet anything about the session that you learned or found interesting. So the storyline for this session would be um, introduction, like what chaos engineering is, where it fits in, and what is uh, what are the principles. So these will be the general introduction um, that applies to all the projects. And then uh, we'll move to the project chaos mesh, what chaos mesh is, uh, what are the, some of the new features that the maintainers have been working on. Um, so I am not one of the maintainers of Chaos Mesh. I'm more of the community member of Chaos Mesh and the user. Um, so I'll be talking from that perspective more. And then we'll be looking at um, some of the demos. Um, I think three demos uh, in which I'll showcase one interesting one, which is the uh, multi-cluster chaos. Um, that is a new one that have been introduced. So, the the systems are have been uh, moving moved from linear systems to the complex systems. So previously we used to have monolithic applications, uh, simple applications where even uh, you know it happens like a single person also knows the end to end how a system works. You can go to them and ask okay how this works. This is where it failed, and this is where you will be able to find a bug in that particular system. Um, over the period of time, uh, the systems have matured enough. It has become non-linear. You have moved to a distributed world where it is all microservices, microservices architecture. If, you know, you have so many um, smaller chunk of your APIs running as a separate microservices inside containers, Kubernetes, and that is unpredictable behavior. You don't know where exactly uh, things go wrong. Like uh, you have so many hundreds of microservices, one thing fails in your application that it becomes very difficult to see where your application actually has failed. So that unpredictable behavior have made uh, the even uh, the systems complex and we need more enhanced tools to um, solve this complexity in terms of chaos. Um, and it becomes like in the previous systems, uh, you like you can go to a single person and you can you know even ask them like what is their end to end. But now it's very difficult to prepare the complete mental model of which microservices is talking to which microservices and you cannot ask a single person, okay, things are wrong, how do we fix it? So you, uh, you need some other mechanism uh, to tackle this problem. So same uh, in, in different like traditional systems have slowly moved uh, into cloud native. With cloud native uh, adoption, we have more Kubernetes adoption because that's what that was the first project of CNCF itself. So with that, you have Kubernetes adoption. Kubernetes itself is a very heavy piece of software that you are running. It, it's not small. You have your control plane nodes, you have components over there, you have your worker nodes, you have components over there. So Kubernetes itself is having a lot of components uh, that has to work properly so that your application works properly. So even the systems have matured and become complex, though they provide a lot of powerful features, but they, the, the complexity has grown. Then you have uh, more microservices and more third-party tooling. What do more third-party tooling means is, even when you install Kubernetes, on, it's not just Kubernetes. On top of Kubernetes, you will be adding your observability layer. You'll be adding your security layer. You'll be adding your service mesh layer. So you keep on adding more and more softwares. Um, so you keep on adding more and more complexity. Each layer that you add, that particular piece of software had have to work perfectly fine in order for your application to run perfectly fine. In the end, you are running your application on Kubernetes. These are just the helper utilities that are making uh, things able to run at scale, at massive production scale. Testing is hard. Um, so you have um, you know, productionized distribution application and you're trying to test it with uh, something like JMeter. So it, it's hard. 
Um, so that's what we, we cannot do. So we need uh, some other mechanism. And that's where we enter chaos engineering. I don't know why I'm not using the clicker. So um, chaos engineering is not something which is very new. Um, it is something which have been in works. I mean, you must have heard of Chaos Monkey, like Netflix originated 2010. So you can imagine like it's more than, you know, 13 plus years that it's there. So the technology itself is not new. It's been there. It has been uh, getting mature more and more with respect to cloud native. Like, Cloud native chaos engineering was not there because cloud native was not there previously. Since the applications have matured, the systems have matured, so is the model that have matured over the time, and so are the tools that have matured over the time. So that's where the cloud native chaos engineering have come in. But the chaos engineering philosophies uh, is something which which are there, which people accept, which people agree to, like um, we'll be talking about the chaos engineering principles. So by definition, it means chaos engineering is the discipline of experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in systems capability to withstand turbulent condition in production. What it means simply is we are injecting the failures into the system to understand how the system will behave if any issue comes and catch that issue before it actually happens in production. It's similar to uh, injecting a vaccine uh, into a person and making them immune to a particular disease. So that is what we are trying to do with chaos engineering. We are injecting that failure in that particular system, and then we are seeing the behavior of that system. If everything works fine, then it works fine. If not, then probably our system needs some modifications uh, to tackle that particular bug. So that's, that's in simple uh, terms. Testing makes an assertion on the property of the system uh, that is based on existing knowledge, and then validate that property. So that is uh, the regular testing that is there. But we are more interested in the experimentation where we define the hypothesis, uh, which is proven or disproven. And as long as hypothesis is uh, not disproven, we, um, you know, confidence grows in the hypothesis. If it's disproven, again, we get to learn that something is wrong and we can build something, uh, you know, we can fix something and improve. So chaos engineering principles. So principle of chaos engineering states that first what we do is, uh, there are a series of steps. So first, we define a steady state, like this is how our application should be behaving. So that's the steady state of the application. And next, we define the hypothesis. So hypothesis, uh, that steady state will continue to be in the state. Now we are bringing this particular change that is there. Then we keep on adding some production-ready variables. Now what does that uh, variables, the variables are the real-world scenarios, like, um, your application is there and you add the latency to your net, uh, application. Your pods are there and let's say th out of three pods, one pod goes down how your applications behave that. Um, your nodes are there, one of your node goes down how your applications behave in that particular scenario. So we keep injecting failures, the real world scenarios to understand um, how our hypothesis that we have done, we can disprove. So we try to disprove the hypothesis by looking at the difference in the steady state um, and between the control group and the experimentation group. So then uh, this is the same, and then we uh, vary with the real world events. You can see turn off things, slow things down, send the invalid responses to the API requests that are there. Um, and then we have to run these experiments in production. Now the funny part is, one, on one hand, we are saying that uh, we are bringing in chaos and we are turning off things, but turning off things isn't a good thing in production, right? So that is where you have to minimize the blast radius, which is very important and critical aspect when you are doing chaos engineering in production. Because your application, your customers are using your application, you do not want them to be impacted by your piece of software that is doing chaos engineering and giving you uh, and trying to find bugs which might not be there or which might be there, but that should not hamper any of the existing uh, things that your customers are using. So for that, you have to minimize the blast radius. You can minimize the blast radius in various ways, like you can, you'll be carefully selecting, uh, you know, which 
but if if there is a pod goes down scenario or pod uh, failure pod kill kind of chaos that you want to inject on your kubernetes cluster so you will be carefully selecting the node selector or particular node of particular application which particular node is fine to run this particular chaos for this particular application so that is how you have to carefully minimize the blast radius and you have to communicate more with the team. So you have to make sure you have enough communication done that this is what will be happening in this particular scenario or this particular application. These are the number of chaos that we'll be doing. And continuous, yeah. We have to uh, keep doing it in a continuous manner. Like as soon as we, uh, let's say you bring in some change or a new feature in your application. So you have to redo all the chaos engineering experiments that you have done with the new release of your applications because that is what Cloud Native is, right? You keep on adding new and new features faster and faster. So that is where you need to do it in a continuous way. Uh, introducing Chaos Mesh. So Chaos Mesh is uh, a tool uh, for doing chaos engineering on Kubernetes. And it also has uh, its own, um, what you call, physical chaos experiments that you can do on the physical nodes. And there are a lot of experiments that you are, you'll be able to do on the um, Kubernetes level. So designed for Kubernetes, you can see you, you can add a pod kill, you can increase the network latency, uh, system level chaos, kernel level chaos. Uh, it has deep cloud integrations already with uh, some of the cloud providers that directly do the cloud provider specific type of chaos that you can inject. Uh, and then it has a dashboard for analytics uh, that you can view, you know, this is how it went, this is how uh, the chaos uh, was done. And it it's not on this particular screen, but it has workflows. So you can actually create a chaos workflow. So basically, if you want to run chaos experiments in serial, like one after the other as a series of experiment, you can do that. If you want to run a few of the experiments or a two types of experiment in parallel, you can do that. So that sort of workflow things also you can uh, create. So how chaos mesh works? Um, this is the simple architecture. So as a user, first uh, you have to install Chaos Mesh. So first you'll be having a Kubernetes cluster. Let's say you have a CVO Kubernetes cluster that you have created. On CVO Kubernetes cluster, you'll be it can be any Kubernetes cluster. That's, that's just an example. So on that cluster, you'll be installing Chaos Mesh. So Chaos Mesh can be installed via Helm. So you'll be installing uh, Chaos Mesh. After that, uh, it'll be installing um, Controller Manager. It, be, it will be installing your uh, Chaos Daemon as a daemon set on all the nodes. So what user will be doing is, user will be creating a custom resource uh, with a specific chaos experiment type. Now, when you install Chaos Mesh, there are a lot of CRDs that gets installed at par as part of it. Uh, there is not a single CRD, there are multiple CRDs. For each experiment, there is a separate CRD. So you will create, let's, uh, for example, you want to create a stress chaos. So you will be creating a stress chaos kind of Kubernetes object and then you'll be specifying your uh, what type of stress CPU uh, you want to in introduce and on which particular application you want to do that. So user will do that. And then Kubernetes API server will inform um, the controller manager, chaos controller manager that there is uh, this particular object. And the controller manager will recognize that this is my object and it will designate that to a chaos daemon. Now, it's the responsibility of the chaos daemon to actually perform the chaos and select on which particular node the chaos will be done, on which particular pod the chaos will be done uh, by uh, using whatever you have specified, like the node selector and stuff like that. It will be deciding that this particular pod has to be killed off uh, this particular node. And then, um, yeah, it also uh, gets the C groups, namespaces, and all those stuff uh, for that. Uh, part. So this is the responsibility of Chaos Daemon. And then the results goes back to the dashboard and you will be able to see everything running over there. Moving on, what's new in Chaos Mesh? So uh, last time, um, Chaos uh, Mesh version 2.0 was there and 2.4 features were introduced. So I'll be telling what's new after 2.5, uh, in 2.5. So already you had pod, network, JVM, IO, stress, HTTP, GCP, DNS, kernel, uh, AWS, uh, which are the 
cloud provider specific chaos. Then the red ones, Azure, Block, and Physical Machine Chaos were introduced in 2.4. Uh, then in 2.5, you have multi cluster chaos experiments, which is something new, which we'll see in the demo as well. Uh, basically, what that means is you will be able to install Chaos Mesh on one cluster, you will be able to connect a remote cluster, which is another particular cluster to that. So let's say you have two cluster one, cluster two. So you will be able to run and create chaos experiments on cluster one, but those experiments will actually be able to communicate to cluster two and run your experiments on cluster two. So that's a multi-cluster kind of uh, chaos experiments that you'll be able to do. HTTP chaos, uh, TLS support. So HTTP chaos with TLS support is a way to bypass the uh, TLS using the self-signed certs. So that's a new addition to the HTTP one. And the workflow UI, is the new workflow UI is enabled by default. I'll actually show you both the previous one and the new one, uh, how it looks like. So when you install the newer version of Chaos Mesh, the 2.5.1, you'll get the new workflow um, out of the box. Okay, cool. Uh, we will go through the demo now. I hope this will work. Okay. So prayers to the demo god and we'll start. So the nodes I have already prepared. Uh, so this is a CVO Kubernetes cluster uh, based on Talos, which is 1.25. Uh, this is the first cluster and this is the This is the second cluster, Chaos Mesh 2. So Chaos Mesh 1 and Chaos Mesh 2. Uh, the controller on uh, the first Chaos Mesh installation that was done was on the cluster 1. So we can see that as well. So you have your controller manager, you have your Chaos Demon, and you have a Chaos Dashboard. Um, one interesting thing, or you can say you should be doing that, uh, is uh, always add HTTPS TLS for your applications. Uh, so that is what I have done for uh, the Chaos dashboard as well. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can use Cert Manager and Let's Encrypt to add certificates to your application. So you just use uh, Cluster Issuer, Certificate, and also uh, I have Nginx Ingress Controller installed on this particular cluster. And uh, I have created and pointed uh, this particular domain, which is the load balancer domain of uh, the Chaos dashboard to have the secret which we created in the certificate. So that's how, that's in general how it works. Like whenever you want to add a TLS support to your application, this is how you do it. So this is already done and we already have Chaos dashboard, which is there. Uh, so the tokens keep on expiring. So what we'll do is we will generate the token again and log out. So we specify the name of the token and the value that we have got. I think the expiry time is one hour. So I was just trying back uh, you one hour back. So it might have expired already. So that's how uh, the Chaos dashboard looks like. Uh, the Chaos Mesh dashboard looks like you, you have your you, quick, quick start uh, experiments and you can create workflows. You can create experiments and stuff. Uh, these are all the CRDs that are installed in the cluster. Uh, so we'll not be doing much via the UI. Uh, we'll be doing much via the uh, chaos. Actually, in the demos, there were a few more slides. Uh, what, what we want to do. So in demo one, uh, basically, I'll be introducing the uh, pod network latency. Uh, so you have the 
uh, chaos mesh which is already installed in cluster one uh, you have application which is already invest and uh, there will be a network chaos that i'll be creating and showing like how the network chaos is getting done so you can see this particular custom resource network chaos so it is just a, adding a delay to the label selectors of app web show and it is adding a 10 millisecond of latency to this particular application that's what uh, simply it is doing so kubectl get pause you can see the application is running uh, what we'll do is we'll apply network chaos it's created we can actually do kubectl get network chaos so that's the crd that's why i i am able to get network chaos because the crd exists so now we will do a port forward to the application web show and then we should be able to see you can see a 10 milliseconds of uh, latency that has been added so that's a pretty normal experiment most commonly used experiment which is there uh, coming to remote cluster stuff which is there now that's an interesting one So now uh, multi-cluster uh, chaos. So in cluster one, you have chaos mesh and um, which is already installed. So user installed chaos mesh in cluster one. Now user creates a remote cluster resource. So you can see down uh, the remote cluster re uh, resource is there where I have defined the name of the cluster, the namespace where I want to install the chaos mesh components and the cube config file. Before applying this YAML file, you actually have to create a secret of your cube config file in cluster one. So you have to do a cube CTL, create a generic secret in the cluster one uh, so that you can give that particular name and value. Once you do that, the chaos mesh controller from cluster one will automatically install the chaos mesh components, the daemon set, uh, et cetera, on cluster two. And then, you will be creating uh, actual chaos. So if you look at the top right, uh, which is the spec remote cluster. So we specify another field, which is a remote cluster. And I want to do this particular chaos experiment. But this will not be applying in cluster two. We'll be applying this in cluster one, but the experiment will be running in cluster two. So that's how it is supposed to work. So remote cluster chaos. So it is burning, uh, burn CPU, um, the name of the chaos, the, uh, the kind of the chaos is stress chaos. And it is using the label selector application Nginx, which is already running like kubectl, uh, create, deploy, Nginx, hyphen f image, Nginx, replicas three. It is already running on cluster two. Uh, that is why it will be able to select that and then add a stress to one particular node from this so let's apply this remote and now we'll go to cluster 2 we'll do kubectl get stress chaos and we can see that the burn cpu chaos uh, was created and has been running we can actually mm, describe that Yep, and it has 17 seconds ago. Uh, it has successfully updated the records and stuff like that. Um, the only part where you would be needing as of now, you'd be needing to, like if you want to visualize uh, the stuff using the dashboard, you have to use Chaos Mesh uh, Cluster 2 dashboard itself. Like uh, the things are not right now visible in the Cluster 1. Um, so yeah, we... I mean, that's where the community support would be needed. Like if, if you need the observability from the connected clusters as well, um, how do uh, that should look like in the cluster one is something uh, we can definitely talk with the maintainers and see how things will progress in the future. But as of now, if you want to view, you will be viewing it from the cluster two's dashboard, which is there. Moving on to the third demo, uh, which is the pod network latency. Uh, so this is, uh, again, the network chaos, the same one that we did in the first one, but we'll be creating a workflow uh, for this particular chaos. I would have to access this dashboard. I don't know if this is also logged out. Yeah, this is also logged out. So we need to create the token again.
Okay, so now we'll be going to the workflows and we'll be creating a new workflow. This is the old workflow UI, which is there. So you can select single, serial, parallel, um, all this. We can we can select parallel. We can give it a name, um, cube con. Deadline means how for how many minutes this should run, two minutes. Uh, then we have to create a child task so we can load from previous experiments. So we recently ran burn CPU. We'll just uh, import that experiment. Uh, we'll submit that and we'll create the child task too. Again, we'll import same burn CPU experiment and just submit that. And on the right hand side, you'll be able to see the workflow custom resource that got generated. Actually, you can save this. Uh, you can load the same custom resource workflow or apply this workflow without even coming to the UI. Uh, you'll be able to do that. So you can see that the templates that you have selected, the name, uh, the label selector and the stress that you want to do. And you submit and uh, you again have to give a name for the workflow. Uh, namespace is default and deadline is two minutes. So it is running, it, it will be running. In the new, um, what is that? Where did it run? Yeah, so this is the new workflow um, where you actually can visualize how things work. You can add, um, add and connect the dots. So you can automatically add like uh, kernel chaos and give, you know, give a sample name and provide all its field and submit, it will be adding a kernel chaos. So you can connect the dots like one after the other after the other, or you want to do it parallelly how it does. So it gives you much more good visualization and you can uh, select all the chaos from here. Like you want to do a pod kill and you can also um, directly upload the file. You can import a workflow over here. So if you have a workflow like a custom resource saved, you can pre-import that particular workflow in this, uh, in, in this particular new um, UI and it should run automatically. So that's the workflow and you can see the previous uh, KubeCon uh, workflow got uh, completed. So that's the green bars which is there and that got completed. So you can see the events that happened and you can also see in general uh, the events which are there. You can also schedule uh, the experiments uh, if you want uh, on like on a, in a continuous manner, like you want uh, weekly or daily, a particular type of experiment to be done on a particular time of a day, then you can do that as well. So yeah, good that all the demos worked. Uh, so recommendations uh, is that chaos engineering is now not uh, I think it is part of the software, uh, software well-defined software architecture framework as well. Uh, sorry, yeah. yeah. So it is part of now the well-defined architecture framework. Like your application is uh, when you design an architecture application in a way you have to have chaos engineering implemented and uh, designed uh, with your architect that with your architecture that you're building for your application. Um, yes, you have to learn some basic concepts and stuff like that. So learn the theory. There are a couple of books as well on chaos engineering. So make sure you check them out. Uh, talk to the maintainers and practitioners because that is something is very important. Like because maintainers will be able to tell you what are the exact use cases that they are seeing people are using in production a lot and that can help you benefit in your applications as well. Uh, chaos, again, communicate. Uh, communication is the key because you are running the chaos engineering is meant to run in production as well uh, with the minimized blast radius. And that can only happen if you do proper communication. So you have to properly communicate what you are doing at which level of your application in production. So that is really, really very critical. Uh, chaos engineering is again expected to grow even more. Uh, there are more and more tools which are coming in. I think there are a few uh, companies, uh, booths as well, which are there and in KubeCon that are doing uh, more and more on chaos engineering, managed chaos engineering, introducing, giving you a complete platform, dashboards. So those will those are rising because uh, this is the need and the challenges are here. 
uh, working towards continuous chaos. Yes, everybody wants, you know, your uh, Argo CD uh, in front of you, Git as a single source of truth, and then everything happening from there. Uh, so have that sort of mechanism in place where you have uh, your uh, CI CD implemented and you create your custom resources, push them to Git, and as soon as it is done, your chaos experiments run. Um, and then, yes, uh, keep an eye on the new features uh, for Chaos Mesh because it is getting better day by day. Join some of the community groups uh, which are there. There's also a, a CNCF uh, working group, Chaos Engineering working group that is publishing a paper on the Chaos Engineering best practices that not only Chaos Mesh but the pro other projects like Litmus Chaos and Chaos Mesh and other projects are coming in together to form the best practices kind of uh, thing getting involved uh, i think it's it's pretty simple every project needs to grow and to grow they need contributors and that's what we have been hearing in the whole kubecon that we we need contributors and same is with uh, chaos mesh just like any other open source project uh, so and and you can do in in all fields like uh, you know docs new experiments even feedback is pretty important like you know hey, this particular feature is missing and if if it if this is there then probably it will cater the this these many use cases so i think those level of feedback is required um, and then new features what all new features are expected from you what you are using in chaos engineering and what you feel is missing is something that the maintainers needs to know so this is something i worked with the maintainers uh, to come up with this slide so that you know i can put that particular message uh, to you folks uh, because chaos engineering uh, chaos mesh in particular uh, is open to have new maintainers as well so basically if you start your journey right now as maybe trying it out providing feedback uh, then improving some of the stuff that you think uh, that will help others as well probably you'll end up being a maintainer of this project going forward and taking it to the next level. Um, and you can see uh, there's a working uh, Chaos Mesh uh, community monthly call, uh, which is there. So you that happens um, every month once, and it is there in the project Chaos Mesh. So the Slack channel is the CNCF. So if you, if you already are in the CNCF Slack channel, you can, uh, in the Slack, you can join this particular Slack channel where all the development and the queries about Chaos Mesh uh, will be answered. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it that I had for this particular session. Thank you so much for uh, coming in and uh, listening to Chaos Engineering. I hope you got a gist of what uh, Chaos Engineering is um, in, in terms of conceptually. Uh, we are injecting some failures to predict, you know, if something goes wrong in production before it actually goes wrong in production, trying to mitigate that sort of behavior. There are a lot of tools out there to do that. And today we discussed about Chaos Mesh because this session was uh, the Chaos Mesh maintainer track. Uh, some of the new features, the multi-cluster Chaos Mesh, the TLS support uh, is something that you can try out in 2.5. And they are working on 2.6 and they need more contributors to keep uh, this project going. This is actually a CNCF incubating project. So this is actually already at step uh, level two. Uh, then the only level which is left is, is graduated. So I think uh, once the community gives enough feedback and we have uh, the maintainers take it to the next level uh, by, you know, having more and more production use cases, uh, people like you who will be using it uh, and yeah, you, you might end up being a maintainer. Like it has happened uh, many times, even in Linkerd, it has happened. Like you start and uh, using a project, and you end up being a maintainer of the project. So, yeah, I th I hope I gave the message from the maintainers about the community and getting involved <laughs> uh, pretty clear. And And I hope the last session was, uh, you know, you, you liked it and you'll go home with uh, some interesting stuff. I'll put the source code and whatever stuff, uh, the CRDs and all these things, and even in the readme, how I prepared this environment, this cluster, how you can exactly replicate uh, using uh, CVO Kubernetes. I, I'll be putting that in a GitHub repository and I'll be updating the slides in the same, um, you know, sked. Uh, in, if you go to the session, you'll be able to get the slides. I'll be updating the slides and the GitHub link in the slides as well so that you can try it out. Uh, try on CO Kubernetes cluster and uh, run your chaos experiments. Thank you so much.